needs to understand God. Theology is the study of Theo, God. All right? You understand? Oh, you're a lively bunch. Hello! Yes. You understand? Yes. Okay? I, I mean, I'm not being complicated. This is simple. I can get complicated. Believe me, I can. Okay? And you all, as you also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is, for you, a faithful minister of Christ. See, it was Epaphras who went there, and he taught them, and now he's going to visit Paul, and Paul's writing this epistle on the report of Epaphras. Hey, poor old Epaphras, he had problems. Boy, I, I, and you know, wherever I go in the world, I have problems. They're taught so badly that the moment you get there, you're having to confront error. And, and the whole purpose, you, you'll find Paul always confronted error. And, and people don't like that. What they want you to do is make them feel good. What they want you to do is, is come with a, a, a nice, uplifting word, no negativity, but actually, when you get to places, they're in such a mess, so devoid of light, that the first thing you have to do is knock out the darkness and turn on the light. And light manifests darkness. The first thing light does, it says in Scripture, is manifest darkness. The last thing you want to do is make people comfortable in delusion. And, and so Paul, writing to a church, he said, look, I've got to get you off your false thinking. And, and evangelicalism is Gnosticism. They're Gnostics. They think by a philosophy and a form of words that they come to Christ. They don't. You can't meet Christ that way. Is that plain? Hello, is that plain? Yes. And so they're Gnostic. Charismatics are Gnostics. They're in the spirit. They're, oh, you know. They don't understand. It's way out there. But I want to tell you something. If you're one of those, you are deceived to the uttermost. I'll show you why. Because it says so. See? The book is a light to my feet. All right? Can't go wrong. Who declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood. That's the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created. And immediately, Paul comes on, he talks about redemption, he talks about forgiveness of sin, and then immediately he comes on and lets you know that this Jesus who shed his blood was creator of heaven and earth. He wants you to know, and you can't praise God if you don't believe in creation. You can't be a Christian if you don't believe that God created heaven and earth in six days and on the seventh day rested. It is an essential part of the gospel of Jesus Christ, creation. 
And so he's speaking to the Greeks who believed in uh, these angels, lower angels that created heaven and earth. And the evil angels, everything is, is evil. The flesh is evil. The earth is evil. Everything around you is evil. And the only way you can get out of the evil is to get yourself into a spirit realm outside of yourself where you can escape the evil. So you go into meditation, you go into Buddhism, you go into Zen Buddhism, you go into Hinduism, you go into all the kind of Eastern religions. And he's saying to them, hey, that's not how it is. The creator of heaven and earth is a good God. And then he starts explaining it. All right? Um, he says, for by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible. Now, he, he says, look, God didn't just create the heaven and earth and all that's in it. He said there's invisible things like angels. God created them. All right, everything invisible, God created. Everything visible, God created. And God is a good God. Is that plain? Amen? Anyone understanding me? Oh, please. Uh, then he goes on. Whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers... All things were created by him and for him. Now, every principality, every power, every dominion was created by God for God. Is that plain? There is nothing in creation that God did not create, whether it's visible or invisible. All principalities, all powers, all dominions were created by him and for him. And so Paul's saying to the Greeks, your idea of a dualism of evil fighting good and good fighting evil and the whole of the earth becoming evil is totally false. You know, my, my hardest job is to get people to believe what Christianity really says. Hey, my God is in control. The devil never is. Do you know, if you read the Bible, you'll find the devil wasn't blamed by, by the people of old. Christians have, have, have concocted Greek philosophy and taken uh, traditions from Babylon and they've started making the devil something. And they've read the book of the Maccabees and all that rubbish in the Apocrypha and they've made up satanic verse uh, and they've got ideas that somehow you know the devil's going to get you if you make a mistake don't have a quiet time you can have a bad day you know you go to prayer meetings and people aren't talking to god they're talking